stab you in the back. They're waiting to break you down. Don't be caught off. God, because the devil don't go to sleep. But praise God. Praise his holy name. My God don't go to sleep either. You see, it's easy if you ain't in tune with God to get your feelings hurt or situation get you hurt. You see, when you find yourself in the hospital, don't let this situation catch you off guard to hurt you. The Holy Spirit will be able to smile in the presence of the devil himself. See, if you're a true worshiper and you got the Holy Ghost, when the devil puts you in the hospital, my sister's in the nursing home, and I told her even though you're in the bed, you still can wave your hand and praise the Lord. It is your attitude that changes this situation. And when she starts praising the Lord, she's now back into the wheelchair. She's still praising the Lord because she serves a God that brings you out. So you may not be happy, but you still have joy because you know that God is going to bring us out of this situation. Matter of fact, when you have the Holy Ghost in you, you turn in this situation and you say to the devil, flee. Flee. Get out of here. I got the Holy Ghost. You don't say in your name, but you say in Jesus' name. That's why you're depressed. Cast out the devil out of your mind. Devil. You may hurt my body, but you can't kill my spirit. And you won't take my joy. You didn't give it to me. You didn't die for me. He rose for me. And he got my back. You should treat the devil how you want to treat the devil. You shake your Bible. Uh-huh. I was in a poor neighborhood. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to give you a, a little illustration. You got to have a can of raid. When the roaches see you, <laughs> and when the roaches see the can, it begins to flee. Because when you spray... It flees. Uh-huh. When mosquitoes, you outside. You get your can, you spray. It flees. Uh, where I'm going with this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light. Uh, you see, you just get your Bible. And it'll flee. Uh, you didn't catch that. When people gossip. Just hold up your Bible and gossip will flee. Ah, oh, when the wrong woman comes around you, just put the word, it will flee. When the dog man comes around you, just put the word, it'll flee. Ah, oh, when you're in the wrong places, just remember, document your faith. I once was lost, 
but now I'm found. Lord, help me to get out of the bar and flee. Ah, a true worshiper documents his faith. It must, there's a difference for clarity of membership versus discipleship. Let me explain these next few minutes. When you're born again, people look that you ought to be somebody, and it should look that like you're going somewhere. A true worshiper knows that it should be coming out of Egypt. A true worshiper knows that it got to go through the wilderness. The true worshiper knows it got to cross over something. Uh, you see uh, Elijah when he got to the river. It no, no needed to know I need to go on the other side. But he documented his faith on what God had done for him in the past. So when he got there, he was not panicking. He just waited. Be still. Uh-huh, you trying right now to be, think out, Lord, why the elder Ford is trying to preach to you. you right now in your mind, you trying to worry about how your bills going to be paid. Uh, you trying to worry about the car note. You trying to worry about your job. Just wait. When Elijah waited, the Holy Spirit says, take off your coat and hit the water. Somebody didn't catch that. Just take off your holy garment <laughs> and strike the problem. I uh, see you, you are drowning in the problem when you should be standing on the bank. God didn't tell you to get in the flood. He told you to stand at the bank. If you just be patient and stand at the bank, God can work this out. He's going to tell you, get up out of your bed, get up out of your car seat, get up out of your pew, take your holy, invisible, Holy Ghost garment. Father, I stretch my hand to thee from which cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord and waters because Moses stretched his rod waters depart uh huh when Daniel stretched his hands together and reached up to heaven ah uh, the lion mouth was shut up went to sleep <laughs> Uh, you see, <laughs> uh, when God allows the Holy Spirit to come into your life, miracles can be performed because you are born again, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, two points I want you to get there are two types of joy there's inside joy and outside joy uh, wake your wife up and your children up <laughs> and your neighbors up wake yourself up uh, we're about to get our praise on right now the inside joy 
is not something you can take off and put on. And see, you got some people, they are flickling lights. <laughs> they one minute on and one minute off. <laughs> but see, a lighthouse, the light got to shine 24 hours. Are you listening to me? Batteries can't run out. Uh-huh. For you to make this, I, I have a flashlight. And this flashlight says it needs no batteries because it won't go out. It's what is made in the battery. Somebody didn't catch that. Well, see, I'm trying to show you there are two kinds of Christians. You got the inside one that has joy, and you got the outside one. Mm -hmm. Now, let me make it real clear here. You see, the battery says, ever ready. It has a little bunny, and it just keep going. Just keep going. It just keep going. You need to be that type. If you have the Holy Ghost, you just gonna keep on going. Through sickness, through pain. Uh, in your marriage, to death do us part. I know you didn't like that, but I, we gotta praise him. Just keep on going. When you're on sick bed, uh, because he said, I will guide you through unto death. That means I going to cross you over. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in the grave, when I come out of the grave, I'm going to be still praising the Lord. Uh-huh. See, inside joy don't depend on do I have a car or not. Some of you can't have joy because you don't have a Mercedes, a BMW, or this or that kind of car. So you don't have no joy. And that's why you got high blood pressure, bills are high, because you're trying to keep up with the Jones and not keep up with the Holy Ghost. Woo! <laughs> you see, you got to understand the inside joy. It is the Holy Ghost. And see, so I don't have to depend on the lottery. I don't have to depend on the garment. I don't have to depend on the car in the house. Because see, when the car break down, you ain't got no joy. When the house may catch on fire, or the house deteriorate, you ain't got no joy. And see, when you have a suit and you think you're somebody, you keep wearing it, it soon wears out. But see, when I had the Holy Ghost, you remember I started this sermon by saying 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, uh, through the thick and through the thin, from the sunshine and the rain, through the tornadoes, through the backbiters, backstabbing, lying. Mm. <laughs> I can have joy. Because I know I have a God that can bring me out, pick me up, turn me around, plant my feet on solid ground. I'm a Christian. You see, we got to understand the outside joy is going to wear out sooner or later. 
is temporal things. But now a true worshiper must be a lighthouse. This is the last point, so wake up. Don't go to sleep on me. Don't turn me off. A true worshiper automatically be a lighthouse. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. I was taught that as a child. Satan can't blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And so when I was at the store, uh, the lady had walked up, but she didn't know my relationship with the cashier. Uh, see, I had you to understand, I started the sermon off, document your faith. She remembered that I came off a deathbed Five years ago. And so she says, how are you? How's your health? How are you coping with this? So I stopped standing at the store. You see, you got to stop. When you have the Holy Ghost, it's not just in the church. We need some true worshipers outside the building. <laughs> Witnessing is worship. Helping somebody is worship. Because whatever you do, eat, drink, and do, it must give God the glory. So I said to the person behind me, just give me one minute to document my faith. I said the same God that allowed me to be baptized. <laughs> and, and I said, is the God that brought me out of Detroit when a man shot at me five feet and missed me? God brought me out. Let me confess, I was in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, but God, Grace and mercy brought me out. I got baptized, born again, saved, saved. Some people don't understand that I'm, there's a difference of being saved and perfect. Some people want to be perfect I want to be saved. That's why you're a fanatic. Because you're trying to be perfect. But not saved. Well first you can't save yourself. Because you see when you're in a situation. You're drowning. You need a lifeguard. Jesus is your lifeguard. You need to get out of that mess and stay out unless you can swim by faith, you need a life preserver. And so long as I'm carrying the word, I recognize on my journey from Egypt to Canaan, I may make a wrong turn, but thy word is a lamp. It will guide me. I just reprogram. You see, my GPS if you get off course and you don't know what to do or it get, you just push restart. Somebody didn't catch that. When you put restart, it reprogram and tell you where to go. And if you get so lost, you just press the button, go home. Ah, did you catch that? If you get lost, just press the button and go home. That's why I have joy. 
because I know I'm going to make some mistakes, but I have got in tune with God. And if the Holy Ghost is in me, if I make a mistake, I can press the button and God will retune me and lead me. Watch this. Let me help some of you. My GPS says, do you want a country ride? Do you want a rural route? It even have, do you want inner city streets? Then it says, do you want just highway? Then it says, shortcut. Well, see why some of you <laughs> can't get your praise? Because you press yours the long way. That's why it took Israel 40 years. Get your praise on. It took them 40 years because they went the long way. <laughs> but all the four, <laughs> now 66, he put the short button. All I got to say, Jesus, save me. <laughs> and he'll give me the shortcut. You see, if you just push the shortcut, then you don't have to be bumping into this and getting out of this and going this way and that way. Just put straight is the way. Walk you in. Broad is the way. That's why you wandering all around, lost, you up and down, crying one minute and in the next minute and this but mm, push the button father I plead the blood of Jesus that's what to wrap this up you need to write down a document let me not be judgmental there have been a lot of people that have been baptized, sitting in the pew, and they've been misery for many years. It's because they hadn't been born again. If they want to be technical, you say, well, I was a new. Uh-huh. You got wet, but you didn't accept the Holy Ghost. You got wet, but you didn't accept the Holy Ghost. It was an outward to demonstrate your humbleness to be baptized. But then the disciples learned in the upper room, I must wait on the Lord for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. So you need to document when you got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some want to document, I was jumping in the church and mm -hmm, that didn't say nothing. That was an outward show. But the reality, if I can help somebody, you see, because if you have the Holy Ghost, it's not for you to just to jump and shout. That's the difference between joy and happiness. Some people praise God because they got a new house, or a new car, a new wife, but they get divorced. Car break down. You got some people who's preaching, some false preachers, who's preaching prosperity don't determine the Holy Ghost. Peter was in a situation. They asked, the beggars asked him, 
But he had to say, silver and gold I have not. But I got the Holy Ghost because I'm going to give you Jesus. And if you just take Jesus, he'll work it out. We said we have a lost corn in the house. You can be in the building coming week after week. And you still lost. Uh, that's the reason why you got to document. Let me make this point for clarification for you. When you go to the store, some of you don't do this, but I do. I'm not playing the race car. But I was little, and I went to the store, and I forgot to ask for a receipt. Police stopped me and said I stole. I said, no. I went to the store, and I came back. I got a, it's, my food is in this bag. How could I put this in this bag? And he said, well, you could have had it last week. I went back to the store and the owner catch this said he paid for it that was a document but I learned a lesson even right now my kids and them will tell you I keep my receipts I'm going somewhere with this I keep my receipts some of you need to go back <laughs> and get your baptismal certificate. <laughs> Did you keep <laughs> your receipt? Because that receipt will remind you when you paid for it. Uh, you see, when I take communion, that's my receipt. It reminds me Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Uh, that's why I have joy. Uh, that's the reason why I preach. Uh, that's the reason I serve a risen Savior. Because I got a receipt. I got a document uh, that me and God have a relationship. Uh, that's why some of you mm -hmm, need a marriage certificate. Document <laughs> your relationship and your relationship. Watch this between you and your wife. Mm hmm. And a relationship. Watch this. We're talking about outside joy. That when your neighbors know that you and God, three got to be in this situation. You and your wife in God, if Jesus, I said if Jesus is in, this is what they taught me as a little boy, is in the house, it's a happy, happy home. If Father, did you catch a single parent, single woman, if the man, not around the house, coming in and out of the house. But if the man is in the house, it's a happy, happy home. If mama is in the house, it's a happy, happy home. I have a little grandchild. He's one I can't sing on the white keys, on the black keys, not can't carry no. But I sung to him when he turned one years old with Cairo in the house. It's a happy, happy home. He starts smiling. I said, brother, it's in the house. It's a happy, happy home. He starts smiling. I said, mama, I birth you. It's a happy, happy. He was smiling. 
I said, Father, uh, he planted a seed in your mama, and it's a happy, happy house. But Jesus uh, uh, bless this house. Are you seeing I'm documenting something? Uh, your daddy and your mama got married a year ago. It's a happy, happy house. That's why you here. Grandpa <laughs> been walking by faith. Uh, it's a happy, happy house. Uh, grandma been walking by faith. It's a happy, happy house. Uh, your grandmother on the other side is a happy, happy house. Are you catching it? And when you make up your mind that in every situation, God's going to be in the situation and you let God have his way and you get out of the way, you're going to have some joy that the world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. And that's why I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Uh, you see, there shall be some evidence in your life. As I was getting my little one minute praise, there was a guy, was a cashier, he started singing. <laughs> the manager came out. You see, you, you got to, when you had the Holy Ghost, <laughs> see, it, it, it can't be staged. <laughs> I was watching, I ain't going to call this evangelist, and he was praying. It was on CNN. You check it out. And uh, the other worshiper had his eye open, but he was trying to praise the Lord with his eye open. And he was looking like this, and the comedian was saying, is this member really buying into what the preacher is preaching? You see, there are people who are watching you, and you've been prayed up ready up, and now you're in the crisis. Now they looking. This is the time to get your praise on. Uh-huh. See, that was locker room. And see, when I played sports in the locker room, we are cheering. But you should be cheering. Uh-huh. In the fourth quarter. Uh, that's why... I, a few weeks I preached, I was at a funeral, and I got a text because the funeral was over, and I was sitting with the family and eating, and they were saying, uh, your team that you're rooting for in the Super Bowl is losing. But I had my wife to text them back. I said, what quarter? We about to end with our praise. Uh, I said, what quarter? And uh, he said, third quarter. I said, talk to me in the fourth quarter. Well, he was talking some noise. And he was just blowing text. He even his friends were blowing text. And he said, are you watching it? I said, no, I'm comforting the family. You see, we, when you got the Holy Ghost, you don't let nobody sidetrack you. I said, I'm here to comfort the family. I'm not worried about this because, see, you got to document. You got to document your faith. And so when it got down to the fourth quarter uh, and four minutes was left in the game, he still was talking a bunch of noise. Well, I said to him, did you look through the years? Have you looked through the years of this young man? And he texts back, no. See, I said you got to document your faith. Well, I said, I'm going to talk my noise 
before the game is over. See, I have some shaky friends. They wait to the situation out, then they praise the Lord. No, I'm praising him right now because I could document my faith. While that guy was talking a little noise, I said, you check when he was in high school, <laughs> when he was in the fourth quarter, what happened? Check out when he was in college, uh, uh, what he was doing. Now just check out that this is his first year. But he, what one time they were behind in the fourth quarter, but they won the game. Ah, there was another game that he was in the same situation. He was beaten up, had to go back to the locker room. Ah, you may get beaten up. I mean, just go back to the locker room and get yourself redressed. Uh, I, I told him, I said, I'm talking my noise. I'm right now talking my noise to the devil. Uh, the God before this world was formed, uh, he said, uh, I see the beginning to the end. Uh, you're going to go through some stuff. Uh, yet or I walk through the valley. Uh-huh. I'm documenting my faith. And my God said, uh, you turn your back on me. That's why you in Egypt. But I'm documenting my faith. And now I got you at the Red Sea. Uh, you didn't have a little faith. But I, I'm going to give you a faith. Just take this little rod. Uh, uh huh, And document my faith. And uh, now I got you on the other side. They begin to praise God. But they got a little weary. He said, look up. Mm -hmm. I'm documenting my faith. There's a cloud by day and a pillar at night. Uh-huh. Document my faith. Uh-huh. Now I'm here at the Jordan River. He says, you don't need no rod. Just document your faith. What did I do in Egypt? What did I do uh, at Mount Sinai? Now you got to walk by faith. I'm talking to you right now. When they start walking, uh, there's something about the hem of the garment. Uh, I'm closing out. Don't lose this thought. Start getting up and praise God. Ah, that lady, she just pressed through the crowd. I press around your television. I press around your kitchen. I press around your table. I just seek those that seek the Lord. Uh huh. Or do we have some seekers here? Do we have some true worshipers here? Somebody need to be like the wise men. Where's the star? You just start walking around, walking around. Walking around and walking around till you see the word. And when you see the word, it will document your faith from Genesis to Revelation. Document your faith. <laughs> you see, in this situation, I went back uh -huh, so you could catch up where I'm going. I said, uh, see, three one for the Father. Two for the Son, three for the Holy Ghost. I said that little man was in the, the fourth quarter. And he saw himself in a situation. Uh, they were behind, but they pulled out. Uh, I'm back with Kansas City. And so when it got down to the two minute, I says, now... It's time for us to show up and show out. Corona, it's time for me to show up and show out. I serve a risen Savior. I know he lives. He lives within my heart. When it got, I kept pushing the button, but I didn't get no answer from those guys who were talking noise. I says, now it's time for us to show up. The guy went into the, in, he went into the, 
in, 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 with his team in the huddle. And he said, I got this. The oldest one, one offensive lineman, he says, we trust you, young man. We're talking about documenting your faith. See, you got to be humble if you're a true worshiper. And so he says, I been through this before. Uh, this is what we're going to do. And you do what you need for us to win. Uh, well, for us to get over this situation, church, what we need to do is huddle up. <laughs> and we need to, to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit going to tell you, I been through this. Jesus going to say, I been through this. The Father said, I been through this. I sent my son down <laughs> to have your back. And when he left, I left you with the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, we got this situation. Yes, it looks bad. Yes, lost. we lost loved ones. But we are like Paul, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. God didn't promise us temporal things. He promised us eternal things. This joy that I have, the world can't destroy. Now it's less than a minute. And you know the rest of the story. The young man, even though his ankle was messed up, even though he was in pain, he didn't give up his faith or his joy. Because he knew that he was a winner. A winner learns from their mistakes. A winner knows that he must go through some pain. As a pastor in sports, lived in Michigan, was a track runner. I thought it was stupid when I had a new coach. He had me running in the heat of the day. He had me running in sub cold weather in the snow. I thought it was crazy. He had me running by the lake in sand. He had me running up in the hills. He had me running down in the valley. He had prepared me to run at that time the 220, 440, the mile, the country run. Are you catching it? He prepared me to be a winner in every situation. In my ministry, as I look back and documented my faith, God had prepared me through some trials and tribulations. He's prepared me for this situation. As a little boy, at six years old, a military guy came into my life. At that time, we were called busy bees. Then we became pathfinders. I'm talking to you young people. He had us at 10 years old in a snowsuit. Just a blanket. 
Our parents was upset because he taught us how to sleep in the snow. How to take tree limbs and weave them and make a bed. He prepared us by the lake. Prepared us to skate on the ice, walk in the snow. I asked a question I, to my team members. I give you this same question. In the winter, you knew you snowed in, your water is off. If somebody offered you a gallon of water, would you take the gallon or the gallon of bleach? Most people say the water. I say the water gonna run out. But that man taught us snow would turn to water. Put it in a pot. He taught us just take a little teaspoon of bleach, boil it, then take a t-shirt and pour it into another pot you have drinking water. God has prepared you how to survive. Through your trials and tribulations, He's prepared you. All you have to say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Just one little drop <laughs> would do. Just two fishes and some loaves would do. Just a sinner on a cross. All you got to do is just look to Jesus and say, remember me. Remember me. Eternal Father, remember us. We just stop to praise you, your holy name. We thank God that you are in our life. And now we turn our eyes upon Jesus. We look full into your wonderful face that the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. We right now pray for the doctors and nurses who made a sacrifice. We pray for all the hospital and medical team. We pray for FEMA. We pray for all the different agencies and food banks that are ministering, who are putting their lives before themselves to sacrifice to help somebody. Sad to know we know somebody is going to die, but we pray they die in the Lord for eternal life. Give us the strength. Give us the daily bread. We plead. If there's anything that calls us to have a disconnect, because we're standing here to increase our faith. Our faith cometh from the Lord. We pause in our misery to just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to the cross. Thank you for being born. Thank you for being baptized. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for the Lord's Supper. Thank you for giving us the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you for giving us disciples. Thank you for giving us evangelists. Thank you for giving us prayer warriors. Thank you for giving us community service. Thank you for giving us administrators. Thank you for giving us the communication that we can communicate even though we are locked out of a building, but you are not locked out with the connection between you and us. And as we go through this trial, I plead right now to everyone who's listening, don't give up, don't turn around, keep walking by faith because God's going to bring you out. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory and praise. Thank you for what you've done in the past, present, and the future. God bless you. Every day